If you're hoping to undertake a medium scale or large scale wind project, you'll almost certainly need in input from a professional consultant at some stage. However, before you get to this stage, you may want to make some initial investigations yourself of the site you have in mind for your wind turbine. You can do this with a simple map survey and a visit to the site and surrounding area. It might be a good idea to do this before you consult the community. If the site's not viable, there's no point in getting hopes up. Alternatively, you could run some initial consultation events, introducing to the community the idea of renewable energy projects and getting a sense of which technologies people like the idea of. If wind energy isn't popular, you may need to think again. Although most people will support an initial feasibility study once presented with the facts about wind. If you're going to investigate wind, there are some questions that you can answer for yourselves before you need to hire a consultant. What is the approximate average annual wind speed at your prospective site? You can find this out online using the Noble Wind Speed Database. This is a rough guide only, but if it shows six meters per second or more at 45 meters above ground level, then it's worth investigating further. Is the site clear of trees or buildings? Remember, you want clean wind as far as possible, but some woodland or other feature is probably okay if you are looking at a turbine that will be significantly taller than any obstacles. Is it in a national park or area of outstanding natural beauty? This won't absolutely prevent you erecting a turbine, but it will make obtaining planning permission less likely. Are there any domestic dwellings within 400 meters of the proposed site? If so, your wind project is probably not feasible because of planning restrictions that relate to noise and other impacts. Are there any bridleways within 200 meters? Turbines cannot be closer than this. Are there any overhead power cables within falling distance of the turbine? Falling distance is deemed to be the height of the turbine's hub, plus the length of the rotor, plus another 30 meters for the sake of safety. Are there any airfields, TV transmitters, or air traffic control towers within three miles? Again, not necessarily a deal breaker, but you need to be aware of them and possibly take them into account into the design of the site. You'll also need to consult with the people who own or manage these facilities. Where is the nearest place you could connect into the national grid? You obviously need to do this to export the electricity you generate. If the nearest substation is several miles away, the cost of transmission could be too high for all but the larger schemes. How easy is the site to access with large machinery? Articulated lorries will need to get up there with the turbine components. Will a new road access need building? Finally, who owns the land? So, you've checked the wind speed, there are no houses, bridle paths, airfields, or overhead lines too close, you know there's a substation nearby and an access road, and you're confident that the landowner can be contacted. It's probably time to talk to a consultant, the community, and the local planning authority. Almost certainly, yes. And to get it, you'll have to show that you've carried out all of the required studies and properly consulted with all those who might be affected by the turbine. This is no small task, but plenty of people have done exactly this. If the consultant whom you have engaged agrees with your initial assessment, he or she will then need to do some more detailed site assessments. First of these will be to make an accurate measure of wind speed and other factors like wind direction. This will involve erecting a mast that supports all the measuring equipment at the height that the proposed turbine will be. This is a critical moment in your project because the mast will attract attention. If you haven't already gone public with your plans, people will now want to know what's going on. And this is the point at which an anti-wind campaign can take off very quickly. You must therefore have a comprehensive plan for consultation, for sharing the data and keeping people informed. Other sections of this resource will introduce you to community consultation in more detail. Your local authority will require several pieces of documentation. If you're hoping to install a large turbine, you may need a full environmental impact assessment. But at the very least, you'll need to carry out various studies. These include covering landscape impact and investigating the ecology of the site, in particular bat and bird studies. They'll be needed to support any planning application. Other sections of this resource will introduce you to the planning system in more detail. 
You'll need to work with the grid operator to ensure that your proposed connection is suitable. Small projects can often be connected to the grid without permission, just by using compliant equipment, but medium to large wind will most likely exceed this. If your project is in a very rural area or is reasonably large, there may be a cost to upgrade the grid to take the new load. Dialogue with the grid provider should be started early and you should keep them up to date so that any costs can be calculated into the project finances. Upgrading the grid to accept a new connection can be quite time consuming and in some areas you may need to put your project in a queue for this, so early and regular communication will help minimise this period. Quite a long time. You'll need to measure the wind speed for at least one full year. If timed correctly, the various other studies can be done in the meantime. The BAT survey, for example, will be carried out between May and September. You should reckon on a minimum of two years to complete all studies and public consultation. You should then estimate another year as a minimum to secure planning permission, including the need to appeal if necessary. You'll also need this time to secure project finance for the full installation. When you add this all up, it's pretty daunting, but it is essentially a series of smaller, discrete tasks and costs, and you should treat the completion of each stage as a cause to celebrate. Also remember that what you learn from the process, whatever the outcome, will be useful learning for other communities trying to achieve the same. So publicize your progress, warts and all. This obviously depends on the scale of the project, but the sums are not insignificant. Before you even think about buying a turbine or preparing the site, you'll need to secure funding to pay for the specialist support, like consultancy and impact studies. A good wind site will repay this investment, but this is risk capital. If you fail to get planning permission, you will not recoup these costs. Other sections of this resource will introduce you to project finance in more detail. The purchase and installation of a single large wind turbine, say a one megawatt machine, along with all the associated costs of consultation, planning, legal, grid connection and so on, is probably in the order of 1.5 million pounds. Thanks for watching.